This mirror is convex and concave at the same time. So what's it like to look into this mirror? Like, we all know what it's like to look into a convex mirror, like this security mirror. It creates a sort of fisheye effect. And if you've ever looked into a makeup mirror, you'll know what it's like to see your reflection from a concave surface. It magnifies your face. Or, you know, just look at the front and back of a spoon. Though it's interesting that this concave mirror magnifies your face. Well, this one turns your face upside down. We'll need to figure that out. What I'm actually showing you here is what it's like to be a camera looking into concave and convex mirrors. But for this video, I want you to experience what it's like to be a person looking into all these different types of mirrors. So I stuck my phone to the inside of this Arnold Schwarzenegger mask. So this is what it's like to be Arnold Schwarzenegger looking into a concave mirror. And this is what it's like to be Arnold Schwarzenegger looking into a convex mirror. But what's it like to be Arnold Schwarzenegger looking into a mirror that's convex and concave at the same time? What do I even mean by that? Well, I'm talking about a mirror that has a saddle point. And just from the name, you probably already have an idea what I'm talking about. I don't have a saddle for illustration purposes, but I do have a Pringle. And a Pringle is a saddle from a mathematical point of view, and only a mathematical point of view. This is the saddle point of the Pringle, and if you travel left or right away from that point, the height of the Pringle goes down. In other words, the saddle point is a maxima. But if I rotate the Pringle and do it again, traveling left or right away from the saddle point, the height of the Pringle goes up. In other words, this point is a minima. So depending on which plane through the Pringle you choose, the saddle point is either a maxima or a minima. But when you take the shape as a whole, it's neither of those things. But for the purposes of experiencing a mirror of this shape, well, it's concave in this direction and convex in this direction. I was trying to figure out how the hell do you make a saddle shaped mirror? And then I came across this video on the Alpha Phoenix channel about putting a mirrored surface on 3D prints. So I asked him if he'd be interested in working on it together. And this is what he came up with. Actually, it doesn't involve 3D printing at all. It's really clever, actually. And if you want to find out how it's done, I recommend you watch his video on the subject. But actually, check out the whole Alpha Phoenix channel because it's incredible. The link is in the card and the description there. So this is what it's like to be Arnold Schwarzenegger looking into a saddle-shaped mirror. As I rotate the mirror, the direction of stretch also rotates. But the image itself never ends up inverted. I found that quite surprising initially because, like, the mirrors concave in one direction and concave mirrors flip images. But then I realized this mirror is acting like a makeup mirror. The concave axis is magnifying the image in that direction instead of flipping it. So how can I get this thing to act like a spoon and invert the image in the concave axis? Well, it's all to do with the location of the focal point. If the head is between the mirror and the focal point of the mirror, then the head is magnified. If the focal point is between the mirror and the head, then the head is flipped. With this mirror, the focal point is somewhere out here. And if I tried to film from outside the focal point, it just wouldn't work. It's too small. You wouldn't be able to see any of Arnold Schwarzenegger. So what I need to do is bring the focal point closer to the mirror. In other words, I need to make the curvature of the mirror more extreme. And fortunately, this mirror is adjustable. But then we run into a slight issue. When you try to do that with, say, a playing card, you actually don't get a saddle point. You get either a trough in this direction or a trough in this direction, and you can flip between the two. If you try hard enough, you can end up with this situation where two corners are pointing up and two corners are pointing down, but then you've got this flat region in the middle. An acrylic sheet is more elastic than a playing card, so this isn't an issue for shallow curvatures. But when I try to increase the curvature, you end up with one axis more curved than the other, and you have this slight flat region in the middle. Andrew Dominski and Michael Barson also offered to make me a saddle-shaped mirror, and I'm hugely grateful for what they've produced. They used a different method. The traditional way to make a saddle point mathematically is to construct a surface called a hyperbolic paraboloid. The equation for that is z equals x times y, which makes intuitive sense. If x and y are both positive or both negative, then z is positive, which pulls these two corners up. But if x is positive and y is negative, or vice versa, then z is negative, which pulls these two corners down. But one thing that's really surprising about a hyperbolic paraboloid is that it can be constructed using only straight lines. You can see that here in these two sweeps. Look, you've got straight lines in this plane and straight lines in this plane. With that in mind, when Andrew and Michael came across a bamboo placemat, they realized they might have the perfect beginnings of a hyperbolic paraboloid mirror. You see, the strips of bamboo constrain those straight lines, but with a twist, we can get that saddle point. 
You can see here how they created a cardboard frame to lock it in the saddle point configuration. Then by heating sheets of PETG above the plastic transition temperature, they could lay that over the top and then clamp it down with a similarly manufactured top plate. Once cooled, the sheet of PETG would be smoother than the surface it cooled on. Then that became the surface that the next sheet is molded to. Each step makes the surface smoother and smoother than the original bamboo. And this is what we have. So there's definitely a trade-off between these two methods of making a saddle-shaped mirror. You can achieve a greater curvature with this one, but it's a little more wobbly. It's interesting to see how even very minor wobbles in the surface can distort the reflection so much. I mean, I should have known that given that I made two videos on the subject, one about caustics and one about Chinese magic mirrors. Link in the card in the description for them. So now that the focal point is between Arnold Schwarzenegger and the mirror, look what happens when I rotate the mirror. The head ends up on its side at one point, which is quite surprising. When the mirror is positioned like this, with that concave axis at 45 degrees, then you're flipping the image in this direction. Look what happens when I do that in Photoshop. Here's the flip and that quite intuitively puts the image on its side. The mirror is convex in this direction, so the image is squished in this direction. Shrinking the image in this direction is what skews the image. That focal point actually does something brilliant to the rays of light hitting the mirror. Andrew and Michael used a laser line and a fog machine to illustrate this. See, there's a focal point, but as you rotate the laser line around, the focal point kind of untwists itself as it moves from the concave plane to the convex plane. How cool is that? By the way, it's fiendishly difficult to keep the subject in the mirror when you're watching a mirrored version of your phone filming a mirror that behaves differently when you tilt it, depending on how it's oriented. And it's constantly overheating because you've stuffed the head to stop it collapsing. Which leads me to the third saddle-shaped mirror, which I commissioned animator Pete McPartland to make. With this, there's no fiddling about with masks and cameras and everything. You just put a 3D model of a head in there and stick the camera inside the head. And I can easily adjust the parameters of the mirror. So there's lots to play with here. But first, as this is rendered digitally, we can explore a little bit of the mathematics of the curve. It's really cool to look at a contour map of a saddle point. Look, as I cut through the mirror, these two curves are hyperbolas. And look, when you get to this point, they touch and you end up with a cross. And actually that's true of all saddle points. Every saddle point has contour lines that cross. Interestingly, a hyperbolic paraboloid can also be formed with the equation z equals x squared minus y squared. Look, you can see there's the x squared curve and there it is sweeping over the minus y squared curve. So this is what happens when you approach the mirror but don't go past the focal point. Your face basically stretches out. Then if you carry on past the focal point, your face unstretches again. That's counterintuitive to me, but actually if we rotate the mirror through 45 degrees so that the concave axis is vertical, we can see that the face starts flipped top to bottom. And when you pass through the focal point, it comes back round to the right way up. And so actually what you're seeing in this orientation is the face flipped horizontally and then unflipping when you go through the focal point. You also see copies of the face creeping in from the sides. It might be more correct to say that those side faces replace the middle face as opposed to the middle face flipping. And that's a brand new sentence that's never been said before. I use an iPhone to take a scan of my face so I could put that in the render. It's not a great quality model, but it's interesting that you can use an iPhone's face ID tech in this way. Here's what happens when you move your head up and down. And when you move your head side to side, and for completeness, and because we can, here's what happens when the mirror slowly flattens and then goes the other way. Probably the ultimate way to make a physical saddle-shaped mirror would be with CNC. There are some significant complications with that. A lot of it's to do with the time and expense of finishing the surface. Though because the saddle shape is made of straight lines, you could potentially make this thing using wire EDM. Link in the card and description to my video about wire EDM. But potentially you could have a really nice surface after the cut that doesn't need a huge amount of finishing. If that ever happens, I'll make a follow-up video. I will watch any movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Terminator, Terminator 2, 
twins. Here's the thing though, I've never seen Conan the Barbarian, even though it's on Netflix. And that's because it's not on Netflix in the UK. Brilliantly, if I search for Conan the, Netflix shows me this show called Barbarians. Like it knows what I want, it's just not giving it to me. But it is available in the US. So if I turn on a US location in Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of this video, and then look, I go back to Netflix, and there's Conan the Barbarian, yay! A VPN encrypts all the web traffic leaving your device, meaning that nobody on your Wi-Fi network, nobody at your internet service provider, nobody in your government, if that's something you need to worry about, is able to see the websites that you visit. Typically, they wouldn't be able to see the content of the websites you visit because most websites use HTTPS, but they would still be able to see the domain names that you visit if you didn't use a VPN. If that's important to you, then that's another use case Scenario. To flip the Netflix use case on its head, I was in France recently and it was a real pain in the ass to do any kind of live admin because any website that I visited while I was there wanted to redirect me to the French version. But by switching Surfshark VPN to a UK IP address, everything worked as if I was at home. That's just a couple of use cases. What else to say? One Surfshark account can be used on an unlimited number of devices. There's a 30 day money back guarantee, which means you can try it absolutely risk free. If you're interested, then there's a great promotion on this one. If you go to surfshark.deals forward slash Steve Mould, you'll get three extra months absolutely free. The link is also in the description, so check out Surfshark today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe, and the algorithm thinks you'll enjoy this video next.